I guess I come into work and I see a new beer on there and I'll, t- I'll taste an ounce of it so I can remind myself what it is. <laughs> an ounce? That's it. <laughs> oh, you cracked me up. <laughs> it is an ounce. <laughs> Sometimes later in the night it's more than an ounce, but when I get here I just have a little taste. Coming to you basically live. From the Beer to Whiskey Studios on the floor of the tap room of the Greenville Beer Exchange, or GBX, as the cool kids call it. I'm Russ Heaps, and welcome to this episode of Big John and Five, where I get my good buddy here, Big John Richards, the beer whisperer around these parts. And uh, he picks a beer from the 20 or more taps at uh, here at GBX, or the Oh, I don't know. Hundreds of bottles and cans of we, I don't think we know. <laughs> yes, yes. It remains a mystery to all. Uh, <laughs> bottles and cans that they have in their retail store uh, up front. And uh, we sniff it, sip it, uh, kibitz about it. John tells us a little bit about the brewery. Sometimes we we'll get a little brewing history. And having said all that nonsense, John, what are we doing? Do another fun beer. Look at how pretty this one is. This is beautiful. That's a pretty one. This one's going to be in, in Russ's wheelhouse, too. We're drinking a German Dunkel Lager, the Warsteiner Dunkel, which is one of the classics. It's a you know a big global brand these days, but it's one of the classic German beers, one of the, one of the beers you'll find all over uh, Germany, if you were to go. And I am so glad that these kinds of beers are getting a resurgence in cra- in American craft, and this beer is one of the reasons why. It's a German Dunkel Lager, not to be confused with Schwartz beer, which in the in the biz we'll call this a teaser. We are going to be doing a Schwartz beer a little later this afternoon. So, um, and that's from one of our local guys. But Dunkel Lager is just it's dark it's dark beer. It's brown colored. But it's super light bodied, it's clean, it's got a little breadiness. Um, it's a, a little sweetness, but it's not a sweet beer. And then it's just got a little toast on the finish, clean, light bodied, really crisp and dry. And it's, it's so fantastically drinkable. And even all summer long, these are refreshing beers. I mean, it, if you don't like hops, you don't like bitterness, and you still like light beer, you want to experiment and craft, this is where you want to be. Dark lager. There's, uh, this is the year of Czech dark lager. Every brewery in America is making a Czech dark lager this year, which warms my heart because it's my current favorite beer style as well. A Czech dark lager pivo? Pivo, correct. Pivo. That's, that's what we call a callback. Yeah. That's, to a different episode. <laughs> that's what they call beer in Czechoslovakia. Pivo. <laughs> There's no Czechoslovakia anymore. There isn't? No. It's just Czech Republic. And Slovakia. Check. They're two different places. <laughs> sort of like Virginia and West Virginia, I guess. Sort of. Sort of, probably. Yeah, there you go. Um, Do they like each if other? They, if, they, if they grew up from two different kinds of people. That, Do they you know, like each other? The, I think so. The Czechs and the Slovs? They like each other. So Slavs? From what I saw. Slovakians? Yeah, I didn't see a lot of animosity. Good. Yeah. People should get, the, get People along. should get along. I sure. think so, too. Speaking of getting along, how about we try this beer? Sounds good to me. Text Miss Lover. Yeah, you smell it real, like really fresh baked bread. Yep. Yeah, you do get the bread right off of it. Ah, man, it's so good. Yeah, just. Oh, wow, I like that. It's the, the body on it's so clean. There's a little a little lingering sweetness on the end of this. Just a touch. More than I remember from last time I tried it, which was... Yes, yesterday? When did I just work here? Yesterday? <laughs> <laughs> they all run together. Yes. Especially the ones that are right next to each other. Right. <laughs> Yeah, just sitting here, really, because I come into work and I see a new beer on there, and I'll, t- I'll taste an ounce of it so I can remind myself what it is. <laughs> an ounce. That's it. <laughs> oh, you cracked me up. <laughs> it is an ounce. <laughs> Sometimes later in the night, it's more than an ounce, but when I get here, I just have a little taste. 
And I, I did taste this one yesterday, and this just has a little bit more of a kind of... It almost has a little bit of a raisiny kind of a sweetness on the very end. Just a hint of like a fermentation kind of raisiness. Yeah. yeah. Raisiny. Yeah. I, I wouldn't have said, said raisins because I don't... They're wrinkled and I don't eat them. <laughs> but, uh, but it is certainly a, a dark fruit kind of... Yeah. That, that you get like in a barley wine or something yeah, like that. Yeah. It's that only without the, the alcohol... Yeah, what's the ABV right. of this? Probably four and a half. You know what? I probably should have looked. Uh, it's up there on the screen. I'm going to guess it's four. Four. I'm going to guess it's 4.4. 4. I don't know. I can't see that far. What Let's am I looking for? Says. There's a light in the way. It's 4.8. 4. 4.8. Ah. Uh, see, so you were wrong again. I was just wrong. Just all kinds of. The misstatements and backtracking and trying to cover for myself. Wow. It's a good thing I don't pay you anything. Your ass would be out of here. <laughs> but you've lost better jobs than this yeah, one, haven't you? <laughs> you say that. He's, um, he's, got, he's got PTSD from the uh, revolving door of jobs, which he usually quits. He doesn't get... Shit can to usually quits. Right. I can't keep up. <laughs> I don't have a scorecard. I can't keep up. It's an adventure. It it's is. an ongoing adventure. It is. It is. Trying to find a home for Big John. <laughs> the, I, uh, the annals of the chronically unemployable. <laughs> uh-huh. So that's why he has time to do this. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Every, t- every time he tells me he's getting a job, I'm like, ah, oh, now what am I going to do? <laughs> I don't know why I worry. I right, don't know why right. I worry. Uh, anything else? Yeah, just fun stuff. I, I um, again, super happy that Kraft is moving back in this direction because we've just got to find our way back to beer-flavored beer. We just have to. And hearkening back to loggers like this and... You can find Worcester and Dunkel, I mean, anywhere. You find it in some grocery stores. Right. It's easy to get your hands on Worcester and Dunkel. But then finding that, compare it to some other good craft breweries doing some similar stuff, and it's just find your way to stuff that tastes like this. I do like the little bit of sweetness that's in this. Yeah. You know, it reminds me, I don't don't say it's light, but it reminds me of like uh, PBR. Pabst Blue Ribbon, which I think has kind of a sweet thing, and Yingling, I think, has yeah. a little bit of a sweet yeah. sweetness to it. But I like this. I like this a lot. Right. And this has, I mean, there's hops in this beer, but there's no real discernible bitterness to this at all. It's super clean and smooth. Yep. Fun stuff. Is that it? Off we go. Off okay. you go. <laughs> so damn lucky. See you next time.